Well, let's move on to wide receivers. We're Joe. Talking guys we want to take a stab on third and fourth rounds of rookie drafts here. Uh, who do you got? Who, who well, do you l- well, we, we, I ended my thing with Deion Kane there talking about a couple of guys that maybe you could sneak into that spot there if you wanted to take some kind of home run cuts. Right. Antonio Callaway being one of those guys is a favorite in that kind of later round, early third for people to take big home run cuts on. Some people said he could have been the best receiver in this draft had he been not suspended for the entire year. Um, right. Obviously, there's a little bit of a clogged room over there, but Corey Coleman could see his way out the door very soon. For some reason, they're not feeling him anymore over there. Um, so he's not a terrible swing, but a lot of baggage there. Um, and then another guy that I like to maybe move up there as a, as a home run swing is Justin Watson, who's just a physical specimen and a, and a spark score. I'm pretty sure kind of guy just checks all the boxes in the metric category. He's on Tampa Bay. Um, I know the pod father loves this guy. He's been singing his praises for a while, so I don't you know, want to sound like I, I discovered this guy. I certainly didn't, but he's on my radar. He went to Penn. Um, big guy, absolutely crushed it in Penn, obviously. Not a ton of attempts to go around, but I think he just dominated his college dominator. Um, 98th percentile. So breakout age in the 80th percentile. He's a he's Sparks a guy. He's a guy who's <laughs> got the size and got the metrics, and he's on Tampa Bay. Which at first glance you're like, yeah, it's a little jammed up over there. But Djax could be out of there next year. Adam Humphreys could easily be out of there next year, and the starting three could be Evans, Justin Watson, and then uh, Godwin, uh, Chris Godwin over there. So easily that could come around and Justin Watson is a, is a high upside uh, home run cut there for me kind of near the end of that round just closing that uh, box that I was talking about with um, that Deion Kane pick at 211. I, like I think the, real quick before I get your guys' takes on some some other guys we obviously didn't pick DJ Chark nobody said anything about DJ Chark he has got, got a it. ton of gr- draft capital but wh- how do you guys feel about this dude Boo. I, in one ffpc league dj chart went early second round what? and in another ffpc league in seven rounds he didn't get drafted yeah so, i mean <laughs> it's you, if you if you had that one guy that just watched the nfl draft and doesn't know anything else about football he took right. dj chark and right. then you got a room full of 12 guys that knows that this that the jaguars have a ton of pass catchers now and they're a run first team and a and a and, and a they have, quarterback you know, is Blake Bortles. They have a guy who's got a year experience doing what DJ Chark is potentially going to do in the league. And Keelan Cole and did and David phenomenal Westbrook, out of and Westbrook. Westbrook looked good. And they just brought in Moncrief and they just and they re-signed Marquise Lee and they brought in a good tight end, Austin Safari and Jenkins. What's what's going yeah. on? It was it was a we they got we, your boy. Uh, we didn't know from the Colts there. We didn't know why. No, Mon, yeah, I, said I said that. Moncrief. Oh, okay. I don't know. I, nobody. I don't. I haven't heard one person say they agreed with the pick when the Jags took DJ Chark. And for me, I mean, I, with the with the draft capital and his speed and his athleticism, I mean, I'm sure he's re, he's ready for somebody's fantasy football yeah. team. But I'm not going to put any draft so capital there, into it. The Jaguars invested a ton of draft yeah. capital into him, and if you just start reading. What's going on with him right now? It's exactly not he's not the receiver that Dante Pettis is by any means, he, but he, can't he is really fast. He did he's got oh, some kick experience, return kick return stuff? and punt okay. return, and okay. so there could be a reason why they invested that kind of draft capital in him as a guy who could fill that role for them of being their new kickoff and kind of punt Fair return enough. guy and not necessarily need to start for a little while. Yeah, like not any good for your fantasy team really. Um, and uh, I don't love him as a receiver. I. He, he catches a ball like he's returning a punt. Yeah, right. They, they, he, I don't even know that he returned too many punts or kicks. He was LSU. their kick returner or their punt returner by the second or third game. I just game thought maybe season. they saw him receiving and was like, I bet he'd be good at returning punts because <laughs> that's how he catches the ball <laughs> yeah. with his with his gut. Yeah, he puts so the I, old shirt out and gets yep, it in the basket. I don't. He's worse than Ted Ginn I, or Colby Fleener combined. I don't like. Uh, I don't like the player, and I definitely don't like the situation. So yeah. get rid of him. So we don't, hate on, we don't on, hate on too many players, but mostly out on DJ Chark. I mean, if he's laying around at the end of the fourth and I got a pick and I want to just take a stab and throw him on the maybe, but I'm probably going to stab on somebody else like yeah. Jalen Samuels if he's still around. For or sure. Or Jalil, Jalil Scott. Right. So let's get well, I got a couple other receiver the, guys, but who do you who do you guys like? Big Co? I throw or? my guy out there. I still I like Equinemius St. Brown. It dude gets picked third at a third, at a three run, the Packers picked three wide receivers in the draft, and he's the third one they picked. Um, and I, and obviously, I, you know, the dude said he doesn't want to stretch for some reason. And <laughs> and worst off, 
I swear, I swear he told a team that. His he dad doesn't his want to stretch. Uh, Mr. I, I uh, Olympic or so, Mr. whatever. Yeah, so he doesn't want to stretch. Mr. Universe. And But what's worse than that for a kid going into the NFL draft that's not like a first-round you know, guaranteed talent kind of guy is he said, I don't want to play special teams. He right. doesn't play special teams. And there's so, already a cloud kind of around him asking how much – does he love right. the game? He, yeah, so he's got he's got options in life. He doesn't need the NFL paycheck apparently, and 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 good for good for him. I'm not I'm not. There's nothing wrong with that, obviously. But I think that if the Packers can somehow give him a shot to get past this, I don't want to space, play special team stuff because I mean, obviously, you if you if you truly love in and love football and you truly your dream is to play do whatever in the NFL, it takes. you're supposed to do whatever. It's kind it of takes. the right of passage. Exactly, get out there and make a tackle on a kickoff. Right. You know that's what you're supposed to do. So either this is going to be a fourth round or third round pick for me that's going to be flamed out, and the Packers have him on the bottom of the depth chart, and you can't even find him in the preseason, or. Equinamia St. Brown, his ridiculous length and size and athleticism and his quicks for that size is going to show through and he's going to be playing with Aaron Rodgers and all of a sudden people are going to be like, dang, that dude's good. I can't believe I passed up on him. Yeah, well, you know? I, for those reasons that you mentioned before that, I don't see much of a chance of him getting on the field unless Probably some crazy not, injuries just because, because of, that attitude. of the attitude that they just out of spite right. will not put him, There's you know, unless but you're like absolutely so gangbusters. Good, but maybe he's so good and it's, that they got to give him a shot. To me, it's much like like the Deion Kane kind of talk, they obviously drafted a receiver in front of him and they have some other receivers on the depth chart in front of him. They drafted Jamon Moore in front of him. They drafted Valdez Scantling in front of him, which I want nothing to do with Valdez Scantling. I'm all set on that. Well, um, what do you do? Like but Jamon Moore, I just can't find myself drafting either, but I have a much easier time putting Equinemius on my team well, a there's, little later. There's some people out there say you're absolutely crazy if you look if you put more if you if you take St. Brown over Jamon Moore, and I get it, there's plenty there's two rounds of draft capital difference between Jamon Moore and Equinemius St. Brown. And let's face it, the Packers are really good. They're up there with probably not quite as good as the Steelers at drafting wide receivers, but they're really good at drafting but wide receivers. How many receivers go over to the Packers and you're so excited for them for like four years and they just never material like there's Every one of them that's on the Packers, everybody likes, you know, you like yeah. your Jeff Janice and you like. Sometimes I mean, he turned into a running back. Maybe Ger Geronimo <laughs> Allison is going to get the shot at the third player this year. But there's been, you know, multiple players on the Packers team in the last, you know, five years that just never really materialized into well, being and, anything. And, a, and part of it was because Jordy stayed around and he kept them right. in. And Devontae and Adams Devontae came Adams through. So, I mean, they got guys. You have Randall Cobb. You're not beating those guys sure. out. So it did. But, you know, and just. Just wanted to throw it out yeah. there. I'm still not giving up. I, it's again, it kind of goes be not that I'm taking him in, in the late second round or anything, but again, I I could take that pick and I could take him in the late third round and be okay with him not ever being any good for right. my team. Even if Jamal Moore's still on the board, absolutely. I feel I, it's okay if it doesn't work out because I'll pick up a wide receiver off a of waiver wire that I could have drafted in the third yeah. round anyway. You know? I don't. I, I've, I'm with you. I, I I can't find myself to bring myself to draft Jamal Moore really in too many spaces. And that's things, you know, give me, that show me, 100 percent. show wrong. me some preseason, show me some right, preseason sure. and I'll change my mind. Absolutely. Maybe I got to go buy Jamon Moore with my fab budget. Absolutely. I'm not, it's not, it's not a pride. Somebody out there here. loves him for sure. I'm not going to be too prideful to go pick it by him or either maybe somebody drafted him and he's gone and I don't get him. That's fine. If he's good, he's good. I'll give it, I'll give you his due. But right now there, I, Equinemius St. Brown is, it looks like a, he's, got all the talent in the world and he's long and he's strong and you know it's yeah. like give me a break let's get give me a break equanimous if i'm talking to him as a man go out there and make a tackle on special teams come on man you're not above that but if somehow it all works out for the packers to give him a shot it could be it could be really good well the thing i don't like about equanimous is, is his ability to go up in the air and, and catch a contested ball he is six five and he's pretty fast so i, I get that but a guy that if, if if you're asking me who who uh, a wide receiver later in this round that I, I would like be looking at is J Jaleel Scott. Everything that Equinemius isn't is what Jaleel Scott is. Like he, exact opposite. He's Mr. Most, high Point Extraordinaire. Right. Yeah. I've been saving the high point uh, <laughs> description for, for this guy here right. because he just goes up and gets the ball. It's very impressive. Um, let's see. 
He he. I don't know if you saw that ridiculous one-handed catch versus Arizona yeah, State. Yeah, well, I've like seen everything there is the to see for Jaleel Scott. I, I I think both of us have him higher than a lot of other people do. I didn't necessarily mean you. I meant like right. you, the listener. Oh, okay. gotcha. Go check that thing out because that was awesome. Completely different depth chart in Baltimore is what I like right. about this. Right, exactly. Pick. They they just signed Crabtree and they did give him a bit of a multi-year deal. And but he's a they, beast. You got to have a good receiver. Sure. Fine. You know you're not gonna beat out Crabtree. Right. But then they sign uh, Willie Sneed. And Beatable. I think, I think he's got two years, but they could they could cut him next year. They would sign Jer- Jer- uh, John Brown to a f- uh, five might million not play. dollar might be awesome one year deal, but that's just a one year deal. Perriman's probably about to get cut, so I mean this it's they it's, it's, they it's drafted his for the Jordan Lasley as well, but a, a they little bit later um, they did. But he's a big, tall, physical guy who can score five. touchdowns and be a red zone menace. Absolutely. Uh, he's he's good at the back Which shoulder Which is something fade. they've been missing over there. He's quick off sure. the line of scrimmage. He lined up all over the place. He, occasional slot appearance. He'll go over the middle of the field. Um, he didn't crush the combine, so nobody really likes him too, too much. But, I mean, I just like the way this guy can go up and get it. He's a good ad-libber. He's going to make some some plays for, for the... For his quarterback, when when the, and the, if Lamar Jackson gets in there, that plays into well with what he does. Um, well, if for a team that has a decimated wide receiver depth chart, he was their fourth round pick. They do have Crabtree, and they and the John Brown is one of my favorite late round or sure. waiver wire pickups this year because Why not? John he could Brown put it all together. John yeah. Brown could play some football. For we sure. saw that he could, he went a thousand yards his second year in the league or something like that, and then the health issues and some injuries, but mainly the health sickle cell did that to him. If John Brown can play, then great, but he's still not six five two twenty, and that's not his game either. So they still got to fill. They still got to put together two, three, four wide receivers over the course of the season. And John Brown, Scott, and Crabtree could be a good easily, three. You know, the, the, it's easily accessible for Jaleel Scott to get on the field. The same thing. The same thing we just said about Jordan Wilkins for the Colts running backs. Right. There's nothing standing in front of Scott's way to be starting for the Ravens wide receivers after the first couple weeks of the season, maybe even before that. Crabtree can't play all three positions. John Brown may or may not be healthy. And after that, it's wide open. Yeah. You got to sure. love a, a, a good, a big, solid stab on Scott. And it's not man. like he's a sixth or a seventh round pick either. I mean, a fourth round pick, they could have had. They could have had Equinemius St. Brown. They didn't, you know, plenty of wide receivers that are decent were still on the board when they grabbed Scott. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So kind of the next two guys consensus typically off the board and sometimes even but mostly before Deion Kane and maybe some people would even go above Traquan Smith with these guys is Kiki Couture and uh, and Deshaun Hamilton, which are both players that I, th- I think, you know, we all like a good bit. Um, Kiki's a really interesting player and he's going to probably be the slot for the Houston Texans there and that's a fantastic offense to be a part of Mm. yeah I don't know a ton about Kiki other than the fact that I know y'all two like him and my boy Sigmund Bloom loves him and in the last couple years Sig ain't left me in the wrong direction I don't I I can't say nothing bad about Kiki and I'm not saying anything bad about him I'm just saying those are kind of the next two guys off the board so I didn't want to like cop out and be like oh yeah we we went down I went these are two guys that we both like I went down the list but I thought I mean I knew that Kiki what we weren't going to get out of here without talking about him he's Kiki he was in the conversation with the Deion Kane and Antonio Callaway situa- you know, e- section there. And you can say what you want to about the target distribution for the Texans last year, which is obviously, you know, DeAndre Hopkins and everybody else with targets. But Kiki could step right in there. You got, what is it, Ellington? That might that's in the slot. I mean, he's completely. I think he's I, back for a year. Maybe. Yeah, that's what they I'm signed saying. him. They got Braxton, but that, I, mean, I mean, Ellington's my boy, but he's he's hardly ever healthy. He's, he's I, you explosive know? and hard to get a hard to keep in front of you, man. Broad that's, shoulders he goes yeah. up and gets it. I like I him, mean, I, but so I mean, then then Deshaun Hamilton is the next guy that's kind of the consensus guy there after those receivers, and he obviously. Carlos Henderson is just today came out was on the roster bubble. This is a new new kind of uh, they're bringing in Deshaun Hamilton to maybe be that slot guy of the future here. And, and like we talked about with Cortland Sutton, he could easily play the slot this year and, and get his move around. And he's obviously ahead of Deshaun Ham- Hamilton on the depth chart. But next year, Thomas and Sanders could be out of could there. Be. and Deshaun Hamilton yeah. could be out playing. And he's a solid talent. Sure. Yeah. Fun to watch. It's Caught a lot of balls at Penn State. He's saw very good after the catch. I mean, we I was watching Gasecki highlights to to or games to get prepped for today's right. podcast, and 
Hamilton's all over the place sure. in those in those. Yeah, games. a real like, solid late pick for Hamilton. Hard to tackle. Yeah. But like Casey said, it's the right now today he looks absolutely buried. Mm-hmm. But that team is, you know, it could one year from now it's going to be completely could, it could be completely it different. It could turn over and given the fact that there's a chance that um the quarterback that they just picked up, Case Keenum. Case Keenum is a really good quarterback. And or at least this, very, very serviceable. I mean, there, there's <laughs> more than serviceable. Yeah, I know it was just I gave him two varies. I know it was just three quarters of a season, but he absolutely yeah. lit it up oh, for the Vikings last for year. For sure, he made and he'd be very back, fantasy relevant players. Very, fa- he was very fan. He was very relevant, and well, he, he made. And oh, yeah. he put two twenty four, two top twenty four guys, and it's not like he had been sitting around for the Vikings learning the and system he was missing for three Dalvin years. Cook, and he, that, you know. so and Rudolph is crushing uh, the 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 Broncos for everything you might have said about them not moving around in the draft, taking shots on quarterback. They might have a quarterback, and then they still got Chad Kelly, who they say he's awesome. So uh, Deshaun Hamilton, while he looks buried today, and the Broncos haven't been really looking like they had a quarterback since Peyton retired. They could be in a lot better shape in eight months. Look, yeah. you know, we, we might be talking about the Broncos offense in a lot different light here in a couple right. months. Well, to wrap these guys up, uh, my favorite kind of long shot guy at the end of this kind of late stab. If Justin Watson isn't available and didn't make it through the gauntlet there I, and your boy Jay Lee Scott's gone and I equanimous, I don't mind taking a stab on. But Trey Quinn is a guy that I'm really interested in. He caught a ton of balls at SMU last year. Um, just a good slot player. You know I love my little white slot guys. And <laughs> James, he went over to Washington. Crowder could easily not get a deal next year. They've been talking him up all camp. Uh, Quinn, that is. Mm-hmm. Um, and could come in there and be Alex Smith's safety valve for the next couple of years. Uh, I like taking a swing on him. I like his performance out of the slot. Kind of maybe not Trent Taylor-esque, but... <laughs> Mr. Irrelevant, not Trent Taylor. All right, well... That's going to wrap up the wide receivers. Let's uh, finish this thing up with some tight ends, which I I think I like all these damn guys. 